Karibu sana. Uh, I'll talk about the Ekegusi naming patterns. I realize that uh, all of us have characters with the names. You have given your characters names. It's good to note that when you are giving your characters those names, you don't just decide uh, to give them any name that comes into your mind. Why? Because we know that in African setting, names have meanings, at least in my community. Every name has a meaning attached to it. If you look at the paper that uh, you are given on the names that are given to God, for example, God has more than, these are about three, six, nine, around 18, 18. And this, th these are not all. So names are very, very important. So the study of uh, names is known as onomastics. That is the study of proper names, especially their origins, meanings, pronunciation, translations, and examples, and all that. We have uh, branches of onomastics, but I am not going to those other branches, but I'll talk about the study of proper names, names of people. Uh, if I could ask one of us uh, to tell us the meaning of uh, their name. Okay. Um, apparently my name has two meaning in Kiswahili, but I ignore the Swahili one, because but in Meru, it means a strong woman. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. Who else wants to tell us the meaning of their name? So my name is Madhu, and in, it's a Sanskrit name. It's an ancient Indian name, and it means sweetness, honey, and light. Thank you. Um, also, my name is Saboke Nyamweya. Isaboke means the father of honey. And then Nyamweya means someone born on a flat place, plain, from the word Omweya. Wow, he, he has told the truth. I, I thought he could uh, lie to us. <laughs> we can conclude that names have meanings. So essentially what I'm trying to emphasize is the fact that when you are giving your characters names, bear in mind that any name that you give to your character has a meaning. And ask yourself, why you decided to pick on a, I mean, on a certain name and left out the others. So does this name assist, us in, assist in the development of the plot of the, your story? Uh, we know of a slave who was known as Kunde Kinte, an African. So when he, he, got, to, when he, he got to his destination, he was forced to drop his name Kunde Kinte. But he, he cried out aloud, saying, My name is Kunte Kinte. They gave him the name Utobi. Kunte Kinte has a meaning. But Utobi, in as much as William Shakespeare talks about a name by any, uh, a name by, uh, I mean, a rose by any other name could smell as sweet, I don't believe in that. If they changed my name to something else, like Jane, they gave me the name Jane, of course, whose meaning I don't know. But Vosibori uh, means freedom. Marando means a creeper. A creeper. Uh, Obuchi means plenty of. So Vosibori is uh, freedom uh, creeping in plenty, spreading out in plenty, you see? But as for Jen, I don't know what it means. Um, the creation of names in the Gusi community is ongoing. In my community, linguistic devices are used to create names and keep these names in circulation. For example, we have uh, Simbarati. I don't know if there is um, a, a person by that name. I'm not too sure, but it sounds familiar. So you, hear, you hear have a name like Simba Ongondi Arati. Another one, Nyangoliu, Kebaki Kekombe, Nyarongi, 
which is <laughs> translated lion sheep rope of hawk cap long trouser. That is the name of a <laughs> of a person. Gesare kena wambe chonya nga wamboli mokono. Kao pisi Mauritia stone watu kisano vayina goti hand. Nyasi mistima keroncho mbera suku kusabuni. Telephone electricity tin son of grave Christmas soap. Sabuni karaya musubati o soap wongende. Soap person daughter of soap beans. So the children were given names, of, uh, uh, were named after dead relatives. So they could acquire their late relatives' names, which initially had a correlation with the circumstances under which the names were given to a child. So continuity of the name was guarded via children being named after their dead relatives. So as I continue with this presentation, I want you to map my content against your culture or your community. See whether you have such, such, such instances or you don't. So in my community, each clan had identifying names. For example, I come from the clan of Aba Mobea. Aba Mobea are people who are, who are sad all the time. They are never happy, they never smile. So they are serious people. I'm married to Omosigisa. Omosigisa means he is fighting. Very, very stubborn, very arrogant. So, so the names were given, the names were given to the children uh, depending on the, the community or the clan where they were born in. We had time and a season we, we had name, na, na, names of children given depending on the time and the season of their birth. A child born in the morning would be called Omambia, morning, Umbura, during the rainy season, ETC. The first behavior of a child would lead the people present at, at its birth into giving it the name that befits that particular child. If the child was born first, an Araka, he could be called Mwango. Mutu wa Araka, amekuja Araka. If he was born crying, he could be called Mariga. Machos, yeah? We named, or we name children, depending on the places and the geographical sites and the physical features. Our history has it that when our great-grandfather married my great-grandmother or great-great-great-grandmother, uh, as they were traveling to my great-grandfather's home, they came to a river bank. And as they crossed, he named uh, Kwamboka. Kwamboka means crossing or going across a river, isn't it? They got to the plains. And they called uh, Kerubo. They got to, uh, uh, to a place where we had trees called Emera. He called uh, Mora. Uh, children are named after plants. We have Metobo, Meroka, Kenawa, Sereti, Onyans. I, I wish you could, uh, you could understand all this. But uh, refer to the, uh, actually you have a handout on this, so you can refer to it. I've done some of the extracts there. Children are named after animals. We have Ongondi, Ongondi means sheep, Umbori means goat, Sese means dog, Ngoko or Tuoni means hen or a cock, Mbeche means guathog. We name our children after utensils. Like we have gekombe, gekombe is cup, nyachuba is bottle, nyasani is plate, virika is kettle, uh, gechiko is spoon. One of my uncles is called gechiko, spoon. Eh? We name our children after farm implements. Like nyauma, nyauma is fork, jembe, makombe is jembe. We name them after stationary. 
karamu, kitabu, nyabairi, nyabairi isi file. After food stuffs and vegetables, onyeni isi vegetable, onyende isi beans, mochere isi rice. And I'm very sure you have some of your friends by those names. Mochere, mochere, mochere. We name our children after institutions. Like we have Nyagitari, which is hospital, Sukuru, which is school. We name them after beddings. Ketanda, Marangeti, Marangeti is a blanket. We name them after work and professions. Moremi is farmer, Machoni is soldier, Mogambi is king. And the most exciting one is we name them after, we name them by their physical deformities. If, you are, if a child is born very, very brown, like, uh, na, oh, okay, if he has alpinism, he is called Masota or Kebariri. If he is born with one eye, he is Gatongo, which, with a hunchback, Sukubi. We name them after technology, Nyasimi, Gari, and uh, recently we have Mobairi, which is mobile. Eh? That's why I told you right from the beginning that the creation of names in Ekegusi culture is ongoing. So every time we have new inventions, my intelligent fox people corrupt that, that word and uh, they name a child after that technological device that has been invented. Uh, we have coined names for our children. We have children by the name Mandamano. Uh, there is one by the name Tiarara and another one Tibim. We name our children after our neighboring tribes, uh, tribes and nations. Moikoyo, Kikuyu, Moindi, Indian, Mosongo, English, Monubi, Nubian, Motenda, Kuria, Momanyi, Masai, Mokamba, Akamba, Moruya, Ruya, Mosoba, Suba. We name them, uh, uh, we give them borrowed names from other communities. For example, we have Maina, Maina Wamutonya. We have that name in my community. So Maina, we have Chacha, we have Kengori, but for you it's Kingo, Ki, Kingori. We have Ondieki, for the laws it's Ondiek. We have Ogembo. That is where at times uh, uh, most people get confused when a Professor Ogembo is introducing himself. They don't know if he's, uh, he's a Mogusi or a Luo. So there were specific names given, uh, there were specific names for girls and boys, and also shared ones. Especially if a mother uh, bore children and uh, they kept on dying one after the other, she could, she could uh, take the child and put it in a basket and place it at crossroads. So she could give the child uh, such names as uh, Motugutwa, who is cast out, Mbera, grave, Kebali, basket, Vitonga, basket, ETC. When uh, Omogusi was working in the white settlement schemes, the Muzungu was not able to pronounce these names well. So what he did, he gave them numbers instead of names. You are number one, number two, number three, number four, number up to the number <coughs> of the, 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 the workers. Uh, because Omogusi was not able to pronounce number one and number two, he could pronounce them as number one became Nyamboani, Number three became Nyambati. Number six became Nyamasis. Number seven was Nyamaseve. And all that. So African names have meanings. And given that we are dealing with the African short stories, remember when you are giving your characters names, you should do so based on the meaning of the on the meaning of uh, 
or, I mean, on the behavior of the character in your short story. This helped a lot because any time they could feel harassed or they could be insulted by their friends, if, for example, a child had one eye and the, the other fellows could abuse him that you are one-eyed, it couldn't have any impact on, on him because, after all, he's used to being called, I mean, to being referred to by his deformity. Thank you so much. If you have a name such as um, the bed broke in Ekegusi, and I'm, tra I'm, translating the, I'm translating a story which is written in Ekegusi, and the character's name is the bed broke, how, how do I deal with that in translation? Shall I say the bed broke walked in? Or do I retain the, you know, I think this is something we shall discuss, isn't it? Very good. So, because it is important for us to know how we shall deal with, with the names. Sawasawa. <laughs>